I don't need a nude palette from Natasha Denona. If you've been on the fence about buying the I Need Nude palette, watch this video and maybe you'll find some other alternatives that you can use instead. This is what the eyeshadow palette looks like. We can see that there are some taupe shades, a mauve shade, a cream shade, a deep brown shade, and a peachy pink shade in the mattes. And for the shimmers, we have a couple of deep shimmers, a couple of mid-tone shimmers, a silvery one, an inner corner highlighty one, like champagne, and a taupe one. The palette is pretty, no doubt, but coming from a color lover like myself, with a skin tone that's not fair or light, I feel like I am not entirely drawn to this eyeshadow palette. Keep in mind that this is a color lover's take on neutrals, so it's not going to be for everyone who loves neutrals. I have a lot of Natasha Denona palettes. I have new ones, old ones, colorful ones, monochromatic ones, discontinued ones, but I don't have each and every one because I cannot fully justify having a fully neutral palette when I know I won't be able to use it. For example, the ones that I don't own and have no plans of owning are the Biba palette, the Glam palette, the Bronze palette, and now this I Need a Nude palette. The Bronze is a maybe if I can find it at rock bottom price, but otherwise I'm not interested. And this is why I think many of our eyeshadow palettes have neutral shades thrown in and if you break them down you will find all of those shades that are in this new I Need a Nude palette. As for the shimmers, I get that the shimmers are sparkly and a new formula and everything, but if you have indies, multi-chromes, that kind of thing, sparkly metals that they're coming out with now, do you really need those shimmers in basic ass colors, even if they're sparkly? At least I don't. I, I don't feel inclined. We have a couple of those taupey shades in the Lila palette. We have that cream shade and that deep brown shade in the Sunset palette. There's a peachy kind of shade in the Sunrise palette. The Zendo has like a light mustardy brown kind of shade. The gold has those deep browns and again those mustardy browns. The retro has those mauvey pink kind of shades that are in the I Need a Nude palette and some deeper shades as well in the same tones. But the three palettes that I would highly recommend over the I Need a Nude palette are the Natasha Denona My Dream palette. This is also a fairly new palette and this is much more of an interesting color story than the basic nudes. This is also essentially a nude palette. There are those neutrally browns, the deepening up shades, there's some peachy shades here, there's a warm brown which is a nice addition, the shimmers are very nice as well, this deep plum shade, this shade, and then there's the gold and the multi-chrome here. I mean, this palette is way better in terms of variation of color, so I really don't need a nude palette. Then I have a recommendation for an all matte palette that personally I really like, but since it's discontinued, no one seems to be talking about it, and that is the Safari palette. Now this has some neutral browns in there. This kind of shade is in the I Need a Nude palette and the light cream shades as well. It has two of those different tones and it has like this, it has this light mauve as well. It has two of those neutral browns. There's some depth in there as well. And now for potentially my favorite palette, this is the Metropolis. If there was a neutral palette from Natasha Denona that I would highly recommend, it would be this one. This is still a neutral palette in my opinion, but it has pops of green, blue, various tones of gold and bronze. It's just a masterpiece in my opinion. Honestly, I am more drawn to these tones than the tones in the I Need Nude palette. It doesn't really have all those shades, but 
in my humble opinion i have a neutral leaning a bit warm undertone so i think these kind of a warmer neutrals would look better on someone like me as opposed to the i need a nude palette which has been described as a cooler tone palette i do like this shade in the palette though the pinky shade in the corner that looks really pretty but there is no world in which i can justify buying this because first of all i don't do my makeup every day and even if i did why would I go for a neutral palette like this one over all the other Natasha Denona palettes that I have? Or all the other indie eyeshadow palettes that I have with the shifts and the shines and the sparkles? Why? I have the bundle of pure metals from Lethal Cosmetics. So if I want a really high shine metallic, yes, Adept Cosmetics. They have those very high shine metallic shimmers in their Minka palette. If you own that, you don't need this. Let me bring that out. Look at these shades. These are neutral shimmers. They have some cool toned options. They have some golds in there. These are absolutely stunning. And if you have this, you don't need any other neutral shimmer in my opinion. Let's swatch a couple of these. Oh wow. Oh my. Oh dear. So creamy. Look at these. This was a side note. Honestly, in order to recreate the looks from the I Need a Nude palette, I don't think I need to even venture away from the Natasha Nona universe. So I want to smack something on my eyes and see if we can dupe the vibes of the I Need a Nude palette. I'm taking this shade for the crease. This shade is similar to the shade called Stone in the I Need a Nude palette. I haven't used my Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes in a while, except the Eye and Face palette, the pink one that they released earlier this year. All my palettes have been just sitting in storage, although I do absolutely love the formula. I still remember the first time I experienced the Natasha Denona formula. It was a wow moment because the eyeshadows were just blending themselves. I didn't have as large of a collection that I have now and I was blown away by the quality because the stuff that I owned or stuff that was generally available in the market was pretty mediocre compared to Natasha Denona and the indie boom hadn't come yet. So this was pretty much it in the world of eyeshadow. Next I want to go into Carpe Diem from the My Dream palette. This is similar to the shade Wit. I believe that's what it says. It's in the bottom left corner of the I Need a Nude palette. And it's like a pinky peach color and very pretty. The picture is so bad that I can't read the damn thing. Just going to keep this a very simple neutral. Honestly, I rarely ever do neutrals, but when I do, I'm like, I should do this more often. It just looks so effortless and classy, but whenever I do my makeup, I'm like, I'll be neglecting all my colorful, gorgeous eyeshadow palettes and going for the brown one. Like, that's just... That's kind of unfair to all my colorful palettes and all my special shades and multi-chromes and the sparkles that I love. Next, I'm going into the shade Amara from the Retro palette. This is similar to the shade Vague from the I Need a Nude palette. This is a nice mauve-toned shade. 
I feel like I'm doing this look in a very colorful makeup kind of way because this isn't really how you do neutral makeup. I feel like I've done so many colorful looks over the past few months that I've sort of forgotten how to do neutral makeup. Then we have the shade Silhouette from the I Need a Nude palette, which is a very deep, cool-toned brown. Something a little similar that I can find in the My Dream palette, but not exactly the same, is Aspiration here, which is slightly plummy-toned, not exactly the deep kind of brown that we have here. But it's close enough. With deep shades, you can't really tell tonal differences too much because they're pretty deep. We will blend that in just a minute. Ooh, it's going very smoky. I love that. The My Dream palette even has a black, so if you want to go deeper than this, you can. There is a slightly warm tone cream shade in the I Need a Nude palette. It's called Fair. And I have something similar in the Safari palette here. This is called Aya. I'm going to use this to brighten up the inner corner. On to the shimmers. So from the swatch pictures, I can see that there is like a pinky shimmer. There's a gold a couple of golds actually, and a champagne, a coppery kind of shimmer, a gunmetal kind of shimmer, and I think between the retro palette and the My Dream palette, we should be covered. So I'm gonna smack a few of these and be done. The shade Babies from the My Dream palette seems a little similar to Ella from the I Need a Nude palette, and I want to try that on. The one from the I Need a Nude might be a more impactful formula, not gonna lie, but I still want to try this one. This one is very smooth. Ooh, and it's not bad either. This is a very nice shimmer formula. For a neutral look, personally I would want my shimmers to be kind of neutral and understated which is exactly what this is giving me. It's not that understated though, it's still quite shiny. Very pretty. There is a pinky kind of shimmer in the I Need a Nude palette and it's called Whisper. So I'm going to use something similar from the Retro palette, which is Glitz right here. This is one of those shades with a strong gold flip. So it's basically just showing up gold. Very pretty. We have a champagne -y kind of shade called Muse in the I Need a Nude palette. And I have the shade Spontaneous from the My Dream palette. Which I will use as an inner corner highlight. So... This looks nice. So I haven't really experienced those Natasha Denona high shine kind of shimmers, but I'm going to just plop on some from the Minka palette and see what that looks like. So in the Minka palette, we have the shade Ava, which is like a cool toned gray brown kind of situation, which I will be using as a replacement for the shade Filigree from the I Need a Nude palette. That took it from a neutral look to kind of like a going out party kind of look. Which honestly I wasn't really going for, but I was experimenting. So pretty. I think we should do a high impact inner corner highlight with Minka as well. Trust me to go crazy with the shimmers. We have Minka hair, which seems to be silver. I'm not going to do too much, otherwise it will just take the look 
overboard, which is not what I'm going for. I want it to stay a little neutral, a little subtle, a little subdued, which I think that ship has kind of sailed. But here we are. This is a cool and warm mix kind of look because when I look at the I Need a Nude palette, this pinky kind of shade that I put on my eyes, that is a warm pinky kind of shade that's included in this palette. The shade called Wit. So if you combine that with the rest of the colors in the I Need a Nude palette, you will get something like this, a mix of warm and cool. But majorly the I Need a Nude palette is cool toned. That is what it's described as. So I'm going to pull up on some liner and mascara and be back in a sec. Here is how the whole look turned out. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you made up your mind to not buy the I Need a Nude palette, maybe it help you overcome some of that FOMO because I've been there, I know what that feels like and I hope this was helpful in some way. I will be back with new content very soon so stick around, subscribe and I will see you very soon. Bye bye. It's funny but I see a lot of influencers making these thumbnails for their I need a nude palette video and it always says her best one yet. I mean how could you say that? She has the gold palette in her portfolio, the metropolis, so many other good ones. Now people don't really like colorful ones but I enjoy the circle loco palette. I enjoy the pastel palette. That is excellent by the way and my favorite neutral palette from her line is definitely the my dream palette so no i need a nude is definitely not her best one yet natasha denona did give a lot of influencers affiliate codes around the time the yucca palette was launched so it is being promoted tooth and nail i tell you even people who don't wear neutrals are promoting it.